In the world of contemporary fashion, there is no institution more prominent than the Mode Museum in Antwerp, Belgium. It's the most exciting fashion museum in the entire world. On this channel, we talk about fashion as an art form, and the MoMU serves as the home for this type of approach. So I had to go see this place for myself. Today, I get to bring you along for a tour of the best fashion exhibit I have ever seen and show you all of the incredible highlights along with my interview with the Mode Museum's director and chief curator, Kat Debeau. Kat was kind enough to share her insights about curation and her thoughts on fashion as an art form. Kat and I talked about so much more than I could include in this episode, and if you'd like to check out the full interview and tons of other exclusive videos, it's available now on the Patreon. This channel runs on donations. The support means the earth to me. Let's get into the interview. The new exhibition, Emotion, yeah. is incredible. Like, uh, thank you. Very good representation of how fashion functions in the modern world. People often talk about fashion being part of culture or, or mm -hmm. a reflection yeah. of culture, but it's often hard. People don't often articulate how that actually happens, and that's that's what yeah. I got out of it in a big way. I'm very, very happy with that feedback because I, I really, really wanted to do an exhibition like that. I thought it was also kind of statement to reopen a museum and also sort of question the impact of the industry of the fashion industry on 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 society mm -hmm. uh, but then the question is how how to do that in a mm -hmm. way that's relevant and it's also appealing to to an audience because a lot of the themes are quite heavy I, I also agree that we we somehow succeeded to to present it in a visual way uh, with lots of um, video lots of photography integrating some art um, but um, I think it, it, it's, it's also how, it's a good example of how we want to shift with our exhibition policy. I think today we find it very important as a museum to, to also discuss the impact of fashion mm -hmm. on society and not just to, to, to focus on fashion as a creative industry or fashion as, as, a, as a form of art and, and just show the spectacle, uh, spectacle or the craftsmanship. Uh, but, but also to, to, to have exhibitions that spark dialogue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you work on an exhibition for a very long time, it remains a paper project, mm -hmm. a research on paper, and it's like uh, some Excel files or some mood boards on a wall. And it's just in the very uh, last stage that you, you see the exhibition coming to life. And um, yeah, this time it took quite a long time before the exhibitions came to life, and that sometimes makes you also quite insecure at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So it was good to be, to have it out in the world and, and to get the feedback. Yeah. Wow. And the, the new exhibition. <laughs> quite yeah, the sun, is, the sun, the sun is, is killing us. <laughs> when we started um, the museum in 2002, it was all quite, um, yeah, not new. Of course, there, there have mm -hmm. been fashion exhibitions for a very long, for a very long time, but it didn't get the attention or the ser sérieux mm -hmm. <laughs> it has now. I also remember that in the beginning it was quite hard, for example, to get loans from art museums or, mm. you know, a lot of, uh, I think a lot of other institutions or people didn't take us serious. And we, we really had to fight <laughs> to, to, yeah, to get accepted um, I think within the the museum world and that's also so nice that it's now much easier to collaborate um, with other institutions other museums and um, because we always find it also very important to work in a cross-disciplinary way I, I because I think it's it's part of the nature of fashion to to work with other disciplines to work with with, with art with film um, um, photographers um, um, even performance yeah Mm -hmm. And what, what did you actually study before you got literature. the... Literature. I studied liter li yes. literature and then That's I had That's you and me both. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good foundation for, for it's jumping It's a good foundation, yeah, because I always find it a bit strange. A lot of people ask me, you know, ah, you're director of the fashion museum, so you, you studied fashion. And I think, like, no, to, to become a director, you... You don't... I'm not the creative one. I work with creatives and it's important that I, that I can understand designers and, like, and can understand creative uh, people and have a dialogue and a collaboration with them. But you also need other skills to, to manage a museum. Uh, but I think you also need other skills as a curator. You need, you need uh, uh, to, to be able to reflect on fashion in an academic way. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you also need to understand creative research. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the hardest part of being a curator, finding the balance between 
academic research and how to integrate the creative research of a designer because mm -hmm. it's something completely different. And if you can merge these two, I think you get that. These are the best exhibitions if you can merge mm -hmm. both um, worlds. The theoretical framework I, I got um, during my studies is, is has always been helpful also to approach fashion, I think. Mm -hmm. And I feel that I, um, within the museum, I also look for people within my curatorial team, for, for example, with different backgrounds, with, with people with a broad interest, not only in fashion. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And then there was a, an interesting note that your curator mentioned to me that um, preservation poses a really interesting challenge for some pieces. Like she mentioned a lot of Walter Van Beerendonck's yes, work yeah. <laughs> is made of plastics and rubbers that are just by their nature, they're not meant to last yeah. for forever. Oh. But your goal, of course, is to make them last yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that process and that challenge? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a contradiction because, of course, as a museum, you, you want to keep the heritage for as long as possible because, of course, eternity is not, is not possible <laughs> with, mm -hmm. with, uh, with fabrics. And, and, and uh, fabrics are um, very fragile. I think the best thing for a, a costume and fashion collection is never show it never show it to the world and keep it in a dark storage mm -hmm. but of course that's not yeah. <laughs> what of course you want but it, you know in, in theory for the garments that would be that would be best uh, so it's always finding a, a balance with what what you can um, uh, do and and we know that uh, to present certain objects is actually damaging them and sometimes it's also looking for alternative ways maybe sometimes it's better to show a photo or a video yeah Mm. The, the thing with fashion curation is there's not one way to, to present fashion. And with emotion, we are now experimenting with it through the, the performances we, we integrated in, in the exhibition. It um, also had such a strong effect on me. I, I love museums. I'm always in mm -hmm. museums. And I, I very rarely have experiences where I walk into a room mm -hmm. and I get this like alert stop kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. And when I walked into the one where the man was wearing the suit and mm -hmm. he, he's behind glass in this triangular cage and the glass is reflective so I can mm -hmm. see myself, but I'm also looking directly mm -hmm. at a person walking around, it's, um, it was very halting. I really thought it was very, it was very scary to do these performances, but it was also very exciting. And, and I see how the audience responds. For example, the first installation, the display case where we have yeah. Um, a real body um, and that also I think immediately emotional in an emotional in a visual way questions the the use of, of mannequins throughout mm -hmm. the exhibition and we, we, we have some of mm -hmm. our mannequins yeah. here and you see already I think immediately the problem these standardized bodies it is problematic the use of mannequins in fashion exhibitions is very very uh, uh, problematic and it's it's you, of course you can write a caption in a wall text contextualizing why you use certain mannequins, mm -hmm. why, why you cannot, why you have these standardized bodies, or you can, you can find ways um, uh, or try to experiment with uh, ways of, of displaying fashion where you maybe have actual bodies. Very effective, I think, because it, it causes you to sit there and really think about this mm -hmm. issue of the mannequin without mm -hmm. even having to be told about it, really. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, instantly yeah, start to question yeah. this thing, and so I imagine that from a management standpoint, that's mm -hmm. got to be very difficult to, to do, to arrange for people to come in at different times and be yeah, in this yeah, case. Yeah, 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 it was but quite of a nightmare and yeah. I, I, it, it, uh, took, it, it cost me a lot of sleep. <laughs> yeah. But it's worth it, it it's so <laughs> it's, effective. Yeah, yeah, it really, it really, yeah. Um, it, yeah. it captured that idea perfectly. Yeah, I'm super happy with the, the, the performance um, we integrated and if I would have, because for me it's not sort of, matter of budget it's often a matter of time i would love to experiment more with this idea of of performance and why not have an exhibition as a performance or, or vice versa and to 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 really go deep in that idea mm. but it it takes time and also logistically mm -hmm. <laughs> it's quite a um yeah because I think I think you can do much much more with that with that idea. The the text of the actual exhibits that are downstairs those support the visual displays mm -hmm. in a very concise and effective way. Mm -hmm. I imagine that you and, and your curator often have this issue of being presented with so much information mm -hmm. that there's this challenge of cutting through that information to the most mm -hmm. important pieces to include. What is that process like of of actually writing an exhibit? Oh, it's it's. Um 
there's no handbook for that. And I think it's also one of the hardest things as, as a curator is to downsize your research and all of your ideas in just a number of sentences. There are sentences that are comprehensible <laughs> for both a specialized audience, but also for an audience that has you know, um, no, no um, knowledge of, of contemporary fashion or of avant-garde fashion. So it's always finding the balance um, to, to, to write um, uh, accessible um, um, texts. And it's, it's often a, a process of revision that a curator writes the text and then I revise it and it goes back and forth. And we have uh, other people in the team revising it and, and sometimes um, People from the educational department say, yeah, we don't understand these words, so what do you mean with that? So it's, a, it's quite a long um, uh, process. Mm -hmm. we, we try to take our time for it. I find it very important uh, to give extra information. I always hope that people um, come to exhibitions and try to understand it first in a visual way to, to also uh, because I think that an exhibition in some way or another should also move you and mm -hmm. that not often happens when you first read a text. I think you, you have to experience the, the exhibition first in a visual way, and then the texts are just there to, to support you or to give extra information. Mm -hmm. But also it's a lot of sort of visually, it's a lot of information to have all these texts. The more languages you offer your information in, the less text you can. It's really a mathematical thing, like it can be that many words and, and um, um, I'm not jealous of that part of it. No, 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 no. It's 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 really tough. It's really tough. Uh, um, I think people underestimate it. I, I think it's an art in itself, mm -hmm. being able to to write um, interesting, good um, um, captions and wall texts uh, that are um, accessible for many different people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There, there was an incredible piece downstairs where the, the room where they're talking about 9-11 happening, mm -hmm. and there's a few different pieces that line up uh, that I, for me, when I think of those collections, I think about them in proximity to that event. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that was a, it was a really poignant, good way of, of handling it. But also I looked at it and I was like, man, this must have been very hard to get the designers to agree with, because I could see I, some I, of them maybe yeah. having a problem with it, or maybe not, maybe they didn't. Um, well, maybe not for that theme <laughs> specifically, but I think for, and also maybe not, um, the, the original object list for the exhibition was different. Mm. So not all objects that were on our wish list are in the exhibition, but mm. that, uh, that is almost um, true for every exhibition. But I always, cause sometimes curators are disappointed, they say, oh, why, why don't they <laughs> give the object or why? <laughs> Why? And I say, yeah, but in the end, the visitor will not know that our object list changed. I would and have never known. No, it was no. Perfect. But that, that happens, and you also have to respect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, when a designer makes a collection and brings it into the world, it, it will get connotations that were not inherent mm -hmm. to his or her creative process. Mm -hmm. But that's how meaning is added, the way we discussed it earlier, mm -hmm. how a garment or a collection functions within, win, within society, whether or, or not the designer likes it or not. But if, if a designer doesn't want, you know, a, a, a certain connotation, I think we will also um, respect that. But then again, I think a lot of um, designers were also very, um, very much triggered by the exhibition and by the themes we were working on. Um, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you think of curation overall as an art form? No. 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 Uh, for me, it's not an art form, curation. You, you curate art. Mm -hmm. But in itself, it's not a, uh, it's not an art. I think it's a, it's it's a profession that demands, I think, different skills. Mm -hmm. It it demands that you understand art and creativity, mm -hmm. and that it demands that you understand how artists work. Mm -hmm. And it's something I think I don't know how how, because I never studied uh, fashion curation or mm -hmm. curation in itself. But for me, it was really was something that I learned on the job. Mm -hmm. And that I still am learning every day uh, because um, the collaboration with every designer is, is new and different. Mm. I think to be a good fashion curator, you need to be, uh, you need also to have an interest in art, in politics, in economics, in sociology, mm -hmm. um, in performance. So the broader their interest, the more interesting I find it to collaborate with, with people. But that's very demanding. Yeah, <laughs> I, I imagine. Yeah.
thank you so much. This was wonderful. You're welcome. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, wow, we had so much sun. The, I know, the I know. It was, was like really blinding like, wow. at one point. <laughs> I, I resisted the urge to make this entire thing just you and me talking about Margiela. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I really wanted to do.